your skin, that shit is popping, girl. Body on ten, damn, you got it, girl. You got a boss up, getting them checks, living your best, racks up. Session every weekend with Sunday School with Lex. Connect with like-minded black women every Sunday at 6 on the Lexus Exodus platform where we have live panels and call-in shows in order to connect and share our stories, discuss divestment and other important topics pertaining to the plights of black women, discuss self-empowerment and self-improvement, and much, much more. Tune in every Sunday at 6 p.m. ET at patreon.com slash Lexus Exodus. See you soon. Hey, boos, hey. It is Lexus Exodus, leader of the Black Women Exodus. How are y'all doing? And like always, if you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. Please share. Please comment in the comment section. Let me know that you're listening. Also, if you enjoy listening to my content on the go, the show is now available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts for audio listeners. Go check out my Patreon community where you can get access to bonus episodes and exclusive content and also a private community of like-minded, divested women. It is linked below. Please also follow me on social media platforms. You can check me out everywhere on all platforms at Lexis Exodus. I also have a backup channel just in case something happens to this one. It is called Lex X. That's L-E-X-E-X. You can find all of this information. Hey, hey. <laughs> I love that song. That's going to be my anthem for the summer. I ain't effing with these dusties. <laughs> How are y'all doing? I ain't seen y'all in such a long time. I hope you all have been well. Y'all, I have been getting to the bag because <laughs> y'all know I live a full life in real life offline and I have a family with real obligations and real relationships. Child, you two don't pay my bills like some of these other folks. So y'all know in my private group also, I've been moving very strategically in my career. A girl making money moves. This is red bottom. These is bloody shoes. <laughs> I make bloody moves. <laughs> doing big things and leveled up last year. So that's my priority. Y'all know I believe in divestment for real. And that includes only investing time and energy in the things that yield the highest returns on your investments. That includes time and resources. Y'all and black women creators on here can't even get y'all to like a damn video. So nah, the channel gonna have to take a back burner until we can get that together. So speaking of that, make sure you pause and like and subscribe. Comment in the comment section. Say hello to let me know that y'all listening. Y'all ain't about to be raising my blood pressure and don't even want to engage y'all. So, <laughs> so anyway, I had to come back tonight, y'all, because y'all have been showing y'all's butts lately. Black woman and whack man, as far as I'm concerned. So the man is fear getting embarrassed by Platypus Pearl with her ugly self. She been getting dragged online for pandering to the Dusties. Then turning around and hosting a known racist on her show, child. Then we got black women making a fool of themselves as well. Throwing our panties at powder Dusties and biracial dig nogs. Like we ain't got no damn common sense either. To the point, y'all making these fools feel so comfortable. One of these dudes actually approach me after having his platform for just three months to ask me to collapse because y'all done emboldened him the unmitigated gall the nerve we got black women who's been doing this work for years and y'all done pumped this dude's head up so much after being here for just a few months he's comfortable approaching black women creators who have been doing this work for years with much larger platforms so that's what i want to talk about tonight we apparently need a refresher course on how black women need to learn how to divest and vet because this is cray cray and y'all are embarrassing us out here. 
So let's illustrate the importance of vetting first by talking about just pearly things and how she done gooped the Manosphere girls because <laughs> don't nobody know how to vet. Okay. And the Nogs made her their queen and now she's getting dragged for kicking about slavery with a notorious racist, y'all. Child. Uh, yeah, I think it's wrong to race mix. So I have a general. question. Yeah. So you don't agree with race mixing, but do you find black women attractive? Yeah. One way. Yeah. America being one. That was when more immigration happened and the culture, we sort of lost the culture. Yeah, because the, the lesson of World War II based on the horrors of the Holocaust is like, this is what happens when nationalism goes awry. This is what happens when nationalism uh, goes awry. But your too argument far. was the Holocaust was not special and all countries have done that. Yeah, and exactly. So I deny some of the you, parts of you it. You deny parts of it don't seem realistic to you. You right. think they were embellished upon. I think they're embellished, yeah. The same way. This sounds, oh gosh. Oh boy. Ah, they're going to be gonna in get trouble. This sounds, this sounds similar to the slavery stuff too. Because that's that's literally, they, they the founder of, or the guy who made Root said, I wanted a myth for my people to live by. So they often, but that's what they do is they embellish, and I'm not trying to say it wasn't horrible, it was, right. but they want to make it like more horrible so that they can control people. Luck and, you know, I don't. Wow. I really don't. I, I don't. I don't wish luck to racists. So the Dusties are mad, y'all. They are triggered. Their bussies are in a bunch. They didn't trust this whole man face bit. This unfortunate looking white woman who doesn't have a relationship, who's unmarried, who's childless, who is clearly a lesbian. I, I'm sorry, y'all. This girl is clearly a stud. She's giving stud vibes to me. She's giving big strap energy. <laughs> they done paid this shit millions, built her platform to millions of subscribers to give them advice on dating, marriage, and relationships. Meanwhile, she is neither dating, married, or in a relationship. Y'all, off her to turn around and openly support someone who is a racist who can't stand a black. Make it make sense, y'all. So they out here looking a plum dumb fool. And this is to be expected. So we know that black men aren't known for their intellect. So we're not surprised. But my problem here is black women are out here doing this bullish too. Trusting anybody who panders and throwing caution to the wind as soon as someone says something nice to us. We'll get to that in just a bit, but for now, let's laugh at how idiotic these dudes have been to allow this masculine, man-faced, single woman <laughs> to talk to them about how to avoid Black women who are masculine, single women. Child. Seriously, this is a joke, and it's like, here's my thing. As superficial as these dudes are denigrating women for their looks, how are they going to turn around and make this busted-ass chick they leader? Like, imagine that. I was on someone's platform recently and was listening who said that the reason why Kevin Samuels has such a cult-like following is because the Dusties collectively are fatherless. And so they're trying to fill that void with Karen Samuels or whoever else can fill that authoritative fatherly figure for them. And then KS left them just like they real Debbie ass fathers. So now they let Platypus Pearl come to fill that void. Just for her to make them look like plum dumb fools. This is a mess. And, and let's just revisit how objectively unattractive this woman is. Okay, and listen, I, I am a bit biased. I genuinely think black women are the most beautiful woman on the planet. Hands down. But I have no problem recognizing when a woman of another group is beautiful. Pearl is not it. I'm sorry, y'all. Like, no, no, no cap, she is not it. This woman is hideous. Platypus face pearl. Benjamin Button face eye pearl. Is that a real girl pearl? <laughs> like I said, she looked like a stud. Shout out to Sama in my private group who said she looked like the entire Iowa basketball team, y'all. <laughs> and she do. <laughs> what do y'all in my group says she appears to be autistic? I'm not sure. They be, they be lit in my private group. Uh, she does look like she has Down syndrome to me. But whatever it is, we can all agree that she is objectively unattractive. Like, seriously, she has a face only a mother can love. And it, it's, it's so crazy how the same males who get off denigrating Black women for not being fit, feminine, or submissive are running up thirsty after a man face Pearl, who is not feminine or submissive. But anyway, these dudes look foolish as F. Now they got eggs on their faces, looking absolutely ridiculous for supporting a grifter. 
someone who saw a sucker, so they licked it. But this illustrates the importance of vetting, y'all. And Black women are innocent in this either because a lot of Black women have egg on their faces now after supporting this mixed race dusty. So let's show him pandering first. Salam alaikum TikTok was cracking so angry by racial. Back with another one. Yo, I want to talk about these passport bros, man. These passport bros again. The more I look into them, the more they look like some creepy old black men. Black men that want to go to a, a foreign country and exploit the, the, the women there. You know, it kind of reminds me of, you know, back in the day, there, there was these, uh, these, 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 these creepy old, old white men that, that were also that will go to place, places like Thailand. And because, you know, there's no really laws against the kind of stuff in Thailand, they will go touch kids over there in Thailand because they knew they could. They knew that they can get away with it. The passport bros kind of remind me of that. Creepy old, old men, old black men that can't get any play here in America. Like you got to be really some type of loser if you can't get any action here in America. America is the land of looseness and <laughs> it's like modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. And if you can't get any play in modern day Sodom and Gomorrah, then there's something wrong with you. Man, I'm I got a stutter. I got a horrible speech impediment. And I and I've I've never had an issue who get getting a woman. And I've been married to eleven for eleven years to the same beautiful black woman that's given me six kids. You know? But it seems that other countries are finally starting to catch on to, to tourism of the passport bros. Brazil, for example, has banned the passport bros. Uh, Brazilian men are threatening the passport bros, threatening them to, to uh, unalive them because they don't want them taking advantage of their women. It's only a matter of time for other countries to follow suit. And it's good to see men from other communities standing up and protecting the, their women and saying no to sex tourism, saying no to, to, these, to these foreign black men coming over to their country and creating broken homes, creating bastard kids, and creating an economic burden on that country, just like they did here in America. These same black men created broken homes and bastard kids here in America and created a huge economic burden. I did another video talking about uh, black men are over a $50 billion drain on the U.S. economy every year, right? Creating a huge burden on the economy here in America. And any foreign woman that actually wants a family with, with a black American man would actually research and look into the communities that these men come from. And when they see how broken the black community is because of black males, when they see all of the fatherless children here because of black males, when they see how hard the black women had to struggle because of black males, they will say, hell no. Okay, stuttering Stanley. Okay, Tragic Mulatto. Okay, Biracial Tyrone. Okay, Nick Lotto. <laughs> Y'all correct myself, but I'm so corny. <laughs> His name is Nick Lotto instead of Big Lotto. <laughs> oh my gosh. But anyway, so black women lined up to co-sign this man without any due diligence. All because he made one or two videos simply saying what we like to hear. And it turns out that he's anti-Black woman as well and has a problematic past. And shout out to Tanya TKO in this next clip who did the due diligence of researching this and exposing his Black ass. So it says here, in real life, most biracial women I have met are just modern Black women with a white parent. That, that, I'm, I'm, I'm confused by that because what is a modern Black woman with a white parent that, so it sounds as if it sounds as if there's it sounds like there's a slight against black women in this comment. No, it 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 wasn't a slight against black women. I don't really think that's the real. I have to go back and look at it, but I think that was just me explaining to them that based upon the, the gender war that a lot of biracial women hate biracial men. Um, for various reasons that I, I don't understand. And a lot of, and I was like, I was trying to compare it to how a lot of black women feel against black men. Yeah, but see the thing that, the thing that's confusing to me is where it says here, it. right? Most biracial women I have met are just modern black women with a white parent. So it's like most that I have met are just 
this. So you're nothing but this. You're just this. Just is the is the is the is the lower part. You are just this. Like if somebody said you're just a janitor. So when you say you are just a black woman with a white parent, that makes it sound as if there are these problematic groups of people in society and you are just like this problematic group, except you just have a white parent. So that's that, that's the well, part that's just a little confusing. Well, if that's how you, you want to take it, that's not how, how I meant it. And that's, and again, that's how people want to, that's how a lot of the haters there, they want to portray it. But. Womp, womp, womp. So this mumbling, bumbling, stuttering fool, this man can't even articulate a coherent sentence and black women are flocking to him in droves, y'all. Blindly supporting and sharing this man's content. All for him to turn around and it turns out he's anti-black woman himself. It also turns out he has a problematic past and has some legal issues. And he also has a history of fraud and was found to be lying quite a bit about his past. I don't know, y'all. I don't care enough to research it. Honestly, again, if you want to see more, go ahead and check out Tanya TKO's page, who did an excellent job of doing a full expose of this grifter. But this is what Black women are falling for, though, because, because we don't bet. There's no betting whatsoever. So back in the day, it used to be that you at least had to play the part to swindle Black women. So you would have to be this quick-witted, quick talking grifter who looked the part and acted the part in order to pull one over on black women. So you'd have to be charismatic. You'd have to talk eloquently. Think, you know, pulpit pimps who have this bravado and who dress well and have, have on suits and problematic pastors and car salesmen who at least knew how to look and act the part to get your money. This dude came in with his receding hairline and his speech impediment and all and black women's panties dropped collectively. Child, I can't. <laughs> so I want to keep going because that vested woman got got as well recently by a white dude named Destiny who been making his rounds, dragging Manosphere Nogs, and turned around, talked about how divesters are cringy when all y'all decided to blindly support him. Y'all, so this is what he all he had to say in order to get y'all support. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, they're not the backbone because women want to be the leaders of the black community. But that's essentially what's happened really? in a lot of these communities. Tell, tell that tell that to the squad that women don't want to be the leaders of the black community. It looks, as you said before, they're doing better in school. They're certainly making all the steps to become yeah, those. They leaders. do because they have to because black men have failed them. OK. Because I black agree. men are looking back to, to legislation from 30 years ago saying Biden put drugs really? in my car. I had to carry yeah. a gun. Like all of these communities that are being policed have just as – well, like we said earlier, there's more black yeah. women than black men in these communities. Black women aren't selling right. drugs. Black women aren't killing each other on the streets. Black women aren't, you know, getting f with drugs like Biden made them to do it. Well, so they, to they, say that, like, do. black women are the fault because yeah. they're the backbones of these communities that are really rough to manage because black yeah. men have, like, fallen on themselves so much. I just don't think it's yeah. fair to say that, like, well, the problem is black women because they have, have to step up to try to manage these communities. Okay. And after y'all started co-signing him and like he said, inundated his pages, his social media platforms, sharing, supporting, engaging, boosting him up the algorithm, he turned around and called y'all cringe. And this is what he had to say. Guys, you follow this? Wait, did, no. Sharp is the pimp guy, right? Yeah. I brought him on once to talk to, on my stream, Annalicia. Okay. I <laughs> might be getting the story wrong, but I, I was told that he doesn't like you sure. or, or had words for you Well, I mean, we probably, something. we might disagree on a lot, but like the Annalicia woman is a, hates black men. <laughs> and they've got to do a huge oh. argument over it. Oh, yeah. She's part of the divester community. So. What is that? Uh, black women that want to abort black male babies and never date or be with black men. Oh. <sighs> So they had an intense conversation. How <laughs> many of these are there? A lot. I noticed because I've gotten a lot of talking points now. Whenever I fight with red pill black men online, there are all, more black women than I knew existed, even in the world, are on like these comment sections. Like, oh yeah, like you tell off these black men, Destiny. And I'm like, holy shit, okay. Divestors. I Divestors. Learn more about yeah. that. I had no clue. I feel like this isn't my business. So he, after, after Yana shown all this overwhelming support for this dude, he turns around and deduces y'all to don't even know what a divested woman is. Talking about, um, we advocate for, for, uh, aborting black babies when that is, that has nothing to do with divestment. Divestment don't even uh, sleep with these males in order to conceive 
black baby. So I don't know what he's talking about. But he also apparently talks about how the investors are cringe. Y'all, I caught this. I caught this. Ask the folks in my private group. And I watched and enjoyed some of Destiny's debates because he is entertaining. He is. He's an excellent debater. But I didn't co-sign him blindly like others did because Black women, again, have to learn how to divest and vet. So, guys, it's not hard. All you got to do is be quiet, sit back, and watch. That's it. And I'm telling y'all, if you wait long enough, these people show their true colors. And I did my research when this dude first started going viral. And lo and behold, he has an interview that he did some time ago where he talks about being in a poly marriage. And I was watching and the lady asked him, oh, is it open ended on, you know, both sides? Basically asking, hey, are you the only one who gets to enjoy being with other people or does your wife get to be open as well? And he said, I prefer that it only be me open on my end but I have to be fair I can't expect her to allow me to be in an open relationship and she doesn't have the option as well and I knew we, he was a, he was a dusty then I knew it because that sounded like some polygamy bullish you can have your cake and eat it too but uh you naturally you want her to be faithful to you Child, I knew he was a powdered donut dusty then, but black women be so quick to throw our purses and our panties at any dude who says one or two things that we like. We're so desperate for validation. All common sense goes out the window. We got to divest and vet, y'all. I'm telling you, you're you going to get egg on your face every time. So don't do all the hard work of undoing all of that conditioning and due diligence um, removing yourself from toxic situations just to end up falling for dust of other races. Like I said, y'all got this random weirdo who popped up um, with a channel three months ago, comfortable reaching out to me, asking to come on my platform because y'all co-signing him without any research, any vetting, any character validation at all. And he just popped up on the scene, said he he got a black wife and said a few things, and now y'all blindly supporting him. After just a few months, if black women are thirsty, got wet panties, desperate, flocking over to his page by the thousands, giving him undying support. It's like, do we not have any survival skills at all? Do we not have any self-preservation skills at all? No critical thinking at all? I'm telling y'all, like clockwork, ever since being on my platform, I've seen this happen once or twice a year over and over again. So a new panderer, a new grifter will pop up on the scene um, and black women will fall for a dumb, dusty ass male who talks all this ish that they want to hear. Then weeks later, it turns out he doesn't practice what he preaches at all. And he's very problematic. Look at happened with Derek Jackson. That's a prime example. And we've seen this happen with several male YouTubers as well. We've seen this happen in the divestment community. So don't be so desperate for validation like the Dusties that you're willing to give your undying loyalty and support to people who ain't earned it, y'all. Make people earn your support. Make people earn your loyalty. Don't just, don't just readily give it away. Bet, y'all, we out here looking crazy. I am gassed up to the point he feel comfortable asking Black women content creators who've been doing this work for years pouring blood, sweat, and tears into our platforms for years, all while offering nothing in return. Nothing. Nothing. But Black women will accept this, all for the possibility of getting the male gaze, for male validation. My platform is literally 50 times the size of his jaw. And he came over here. Uh, no shame. <laughs> no, no shame, honestly. I admire the tenacity. No shame with nothing in return. Coming over to my space with his hand out. After I've been pouring my blood, sweat, and tears in my channel faithfully for years, asking if he can be on my platform without offering anything in return. Y'all, that would be like me approaching uh, Pearly Things with her one and a half million followers. Like, hey, my supporters think I should be on your channel. Literally. Her platform is 50 times the size of mine. She would be like, are you dumb? Are you stupid? Like, who, what, who are you? I don't know you. Who the F are you? Do y'all know how many brands I turn away wanting to market on my channel just because they don't align with my goals and my objective of this channel? It's like, how dare you have the gall to approach Black women creatives empty-handed and entitled, expecting us to share our platform that we poured our blood, sweat, and tears in for years? 
with nothing to show for it, nothing. No documented proof that he's done anything, nothing, nothing. And y'all y'all can miss me with this advocate-ish. If he's an advocate, he needs to show up with tangible action items that he's done to prove it. So what's your resume, sir? What Black women organizations have you supported, sir? What Black women have you supported in your real life? And not just the woman that you're sleeping with. Because it's one thing for a man to advocate for the woman who is giving him access to her body. What do you do for the women who you have platonic relationships with? Your Black co-workers who are Black women. Um, acquaintances who are Black women. How do you advocate for them? Where are the receipts, sir? What financial contributions have you made to organizations that support Black women and girls? What legislation have you advocated for? Because legislators, they don't look like me. <laughs> they, they don't they don't look like me and other black women in the divested community. They look like you, sir. So what have you done with that privilege and power that you have? Where are the receipts? Y'all, what's your resume? And black women will co-sign this ish all because he say that he's married to a black woman. Don't know him from a can of paint, but so desperate for anyone who shows them a little bit of attention, we flocking in droves. Y'all piss me off. Then, then y'all got the nerve to listen to him condescendingly tell you what's right and what's wrong with the divestment movement. Are y'all kidding me? This man has been on the internet for three months, has shown no receipts about what he's done to advocate for black women. And y'all sitting here letting him dismissively tell y'all what the next steps of the divestment movement should be. Are y'all crazy? Are y'all crazy? You don't have the credentials, sir. You don't have the range. Rule 101 of allyship is you do not center yourself in a movement that you're not centered in. Rule number two is if the marginalized people allow you to be a part of the movement, you shut the F up and let the subject matter experts lead. Okay, you sit back and silently support. Okay, you support financially. You advocate with your privilege. You, you advocate for helping to advance them in other ways. You spoke when you're spoken to. Let the Black women lead. Let the Black women who were raised in these communities share expertise on next steps. Let the Black women who have personally been victimized by this violence give their insight on what Black women should be doing to protect themselves. Let those who have directly been impacted by Black femicide give their insight and give their foresight on what's next. Give those Black women who've gone to school, who have education and careers in the African-American woman plight, assess the divestment community and talk about what needs to be done and what's next. You don't, you don't get to come in at the tail end of this movement calling shots. When there's Black women online who poured years of their lives, blood, sweat, and tears into these topics. Y'all do better. We got to divest and vet. Otherwise, it's only a matter of time before you won't end up with egg on your face again. Then it's just rinse, wash, and repeat. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, see you guys. Bye.
Brothers, if y'all come across a red iPhone, you can please bring it to the sound stage. Red iPhone, appreciate it.